David Halgard. Um, I'm the Director of Research Services at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Well, the first relate to um, the governorship of Sir William Keith, and he was governor of Pennsylvania from 1717 to 1726. Um, he came into power during a period where there was, um, I guess you would say, recession or depression in the economy, and he supported populist uh, measures, including a uh, paper money system and debtor relief. Keith, um, he's writing to Hannah Penn, who, had, who was the proprietor of Pennsylvania. Um, this is in uh, September 1724. Uh, she had sent instructions tell him, telling him that every speech that he gave had to be approved, um, and all the laws that he was supposed to not support. In this letter, uh, he writes to Hannah Penn, and he says, of course I will obey all of your lawful commands. And he spends the rest of the uh, letter explaining why her laws were not lawful or constitutional. And basically, he would not obey anything that she said. Um, and then at the end, he signs it, your most humble and obedient servant. And so, uh, to me, this is just, just a wonderful example how in a, in a deferential society, uh, people spoke, uh, used deferential rhetoric, but often for the exact opposite reason of, of really being rhetorical. Basically, he was thumbing his nose at her. The last letter is from Phineas Pemberton to William Penn, and this was during an earlier period. This was April 3rd of uh, 1687. Uh, Pemberton was a major office holder in uh, Bucks County. Um, and he was a major political figure, and I think, I think you can say that he was someone who was really loyal to Penn. Um, and I think this letter is, uh, the, the, the emotions of the different political factions of this time were really pretty uh, fervent, but also opaque. Uh, Pemberton writes to Penn, and, and he, he says that he and other members of the provincial council were loyal to Penn and had resisted, quote, uh, the surging waves of the pestiferous apostates and runagados that would flow over them. Um, to me, this is a wonderful example both of the high emotion and, and of the opaqueness of uh, political rhetoric during this period. To me, these, these are um, you know, very exciting little slices of political life uh, during this, this period.